So everyone, welcome. Uh, this is our first ever virtual community workshop, and I am very excited to be here hosting that for you uh, as your new community manager. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, this is Oleg. Uh, Oleg, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, thank you. Uh, I'm Oleg. I've been uh, with NATAN for over a year now, working on the front end mainly, but for the past few weeks and months, I've been focusing on this uh, AI Langchain integration, uh, learning more about Langchain make myself. So it's been a cool journey. For those of you who don't know what AI Langchain is, um, what N810 has done is create a series of features and workflow nodes that can make this more accessible to you. Um, you most people will probably be familiar what what AI is. But more specifically, you have AI chatbots and AI um, but sources that can actually process information for you and use it in, in interpret it into a in a way that's usable. Um, but Oleg, would you like to kind of dive a little deeper into what we are been working uh, on here at NAN? We heard voices from the community about uh, integrating the Langchain that people are, and we've seen people using Langchain uh, a lot to, to build AI applications because uh, we saw that it integrate, it would integrate so well with all the data streams and uh, options that you have with NA10, with how you can work with your data, get your data into NA10, process it, and then pass it into the these AI workflows, uh, we started building this uh, sets of nodes and generally the, the features around it to be able to create these AI workflows. There's several ways for you to get data in NA10. So I mentioned we have Slack, email, uh, from getting it from Webhook or just requesting it from somewhere. And then you can wrap it all up, pass it to, to the agent or chain and do some uh, decisions on top of it. It's super interesting how you can use these language models as sort of a backend and let it make decisions like in, in your app that you would otherwise have to program for. Uh, so like you don't have to handle every single use case. You, mm. you can just give the language model an input and it, it will be able to figure out based on your prompt what it what you want it to do mm -hmm. and give you an uh, output that, that makes sense for it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is definitely where your data plays a role. Uh, it also decreases the amount of hallucinations this model makes. If you if you give it some data and you ask it to only work on top of that data or to only provide mm -hmm. you answer on top of that data, uh, not a good aspect. And mm -hmm. you mentioned that you can start very quickly and yes. uh, we're going to see it in a bit, I think, where you can literally go into the templates, click on a template, provide your credentials, and mm -hmm. that's it. You have, a, you have a chatbot that you can connect your other tools to. We're going to create three workflows today. One of them is going to be sort of a main workflow, which will have an agent uh, uh, that will be communicating with via chat. It's going to have a memory. And then we're going to create two workflows to give this agent some some uh, tools, so some things that it can do except for answering the questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, let's let's get right into it because, as you said, it might take some time. I'm going to go into templates mm -hmm. and click on the advanced AI. Uh, as you mentioned, there's a bunch of templates that you can like, view for whatever use case you might have. Mm -hmm. This starts a building for uh, for your workflow. But I'm uh, specifically interested in the Slack chat book by, for, by AI. Click on the use workflow. And it gives me these notes already set up. It gives me the stickies that explain what these notes do. Uh, I just need to create, uh, I just need to set up the credentials. So let me do that now. What I've done, I've opened the chat OpenAI, which is the language model node that connects uh, to an agent. And I'm going to set up the credentials first. So I'll set, set the OpenAI credentials. I select my model, which is GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K in this case. And I'll just leave the default sampling temperature for now. Um, I also need to set up the webhook to, uh, to listen for the Slack messages. And what I've already done is I've set up the credentials in Slack. So when you're setting up a new webhook in Slack, you would have to go through the setting up step uh, where you basically uh, respond to a webhook challenge. Uh, you respond back with a challenge. It's very simple to do, but I just uh, do not lose time now. So I've already done that. So you see that I have to explain what I'm doing here in the webhook. We're just waiting on this address uh, for a call. And that call is going to come from Slack. So my path is Guildfoil uh, minus webhook because that's the name of the bot that I'm using for testing <laughs> and this is the url and then once you set your workflow to active here uh your app or the slack would have to use the production url that you could see here mm -hmm. uh, but let's let's stick with the test url because that's what we have set up mm -hmm. uh so we have the webhook ready uh we can test that it's actually doing something 
by sending a message to Guildhall here. And you see that the execution or the listening stopped. We got an output here and we got the data about the message. Uh, some headers, uh, and this is the body which contains the um, message. Mm -hmm. See here, text, hello. And it contains a bun bunch of other information that we're going to use throughout the workflow to yeah, build this slide bot. Uh, next step is we filtered out the non-user messages because the uh, Slack would fire uh, fire a webhook request also for your bot. So we have to make sure that uh, we don't process these messages mm -hmm. uh, because we only care about what user says to the agent. We don't want it to talk back to itself. Uh, then we have our agent. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bit spicy. So it, we tell it that it's in Guilfoyle from Silicon Valley TV show. Amplify your bluntness and cynicism, tolerating zero incompetence. Be, yeah, you can. Um, so these connections that are coming here from the bottom, and these are what we call uh, configuration nodes. Uh, so they provide some functionality to like these, uh, this uh, root node. Uh, so we see that this root node agent is utilizing model. That one is required. So we connected chat open AI. Uh, and with a conversational uh, agent, you can only use chat models. So you see that uh, when I click here on the model, I click on the plus connection, uh, here there are only chat models. Uh, then we have a memory, which is not required. So your agent would run completely fine without it, but it just wouldn't be able to re uh, remember things. And we'll go into the setup of the memory in a bit. Uh, we have some tools that we give to the agent that it can use. Here we have Wiki and SERP API. Uh, we won't be needing that, so we'll just keep the key for now. And uh, finally, there's an output parser that allows you to provide it as uh, either parse it in list or provide it with a schema or JSON schema to what you expect your JSON output to be of uh, this node. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is fine for now. Let's check how the memory is set up because that's uh, an important aspect to how this Slack bot is going to work. Mm -hmm. So if I open the memory, uh, this is the, the configuration for it. And we can click here on mapping. So uh, we have two modes in the input. We have mapping and debugging. Debugging would show you the, cur cur the current execution input input to this, to this node, while mm -hmm. with mapping, you can map execution data from the previous nodes, sort of, mm -hmm. from, from the parent of your root node. So we check the webhook node. Mm -hmm and we are going to set a session key. So what our memory, we're, we're using window buffer memory, which stores your conversation based on the session key that you provide. The session key is includes the workflow ID and it includes whatever you write here. So we want this agent to be able to remember our user. So we're going to key it uh, the, the session based on the, the user ID. Or we could also use a thread ID if we would just want it to have a memory within a thread, or we can do combinations of any of those or any other attributes. Uh, but let's use user for now. So we see that the Slack uh, response, uh, this is the, the webhook here, it gives us the user, which is what we're going to use. So let me just get rid of this to make it empty. Mm -hmm. uh, you see here that I click to expression to be able to I'll write the expressions and I'll just drag it from the left panel user to here. Uh, we get undefined because we haven't executed it yet, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's going to be there. Uh, we also configure here the window, uh, context window length, which, which is how many mm, messages in history it's going to store or it's going mm -hmm. to remember. So that's memory setup. We also have Wikipedia. We give it Wikipedia as one of the tools that it can use for now. Uh, in a bit, we're going to add it more tools, but let's just keep Wikipedia for now for testing. And uh, then we have a Slack node that is going to respond the, uh, to the message. So let's see how that is set up. Uh, again, I need to set up my credential. And here we can see that it's, uh, it's getting the user. We need to fill in wh which user is going to send the message to. So we do it by selecting send user by ID. Here again, we need to provide it the ID, which we can drag, uh, same as in the previous step. So that mm -hmm. would be this thing. Drag it in. We got it. And uh, we want to give it a message. So the message would be the output of an agent. Um, and that's it. We, we just sh uh, basically change the credentials to set it up for our Slack credentials, and now it should uh, work. If we go execute workflow, mm -hmm. that will start the webhook test listener. 
So now I should be ready to say hello. Um, and you see that it triggered the event uh, and <laughs> it provided the response here. Wow. Uh, Very polite. Now it's. <laughs> Let's, 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 uh, so now if I would say something again, nothing would happen because that webhook is not listening anymore because in the test mode, like when you click on the execute workflow and you're not, you don't have it active, uh, it's only listen once, then it's going to terminate the listener. So you would have to click on the execute workflow again, mm -hmm. uh, to get any response. That's a good reminder to show you the AI debugging. So, uh, if I've opened this agent, uh, agent node. And here it has two tabs. It has an output, which is what we are sending to the Slack to send back to the user. So here, in the, here we're using a JSON output. And you see that these are now green, so you are able to see what exactly they result to. So here we have our message and the user ID. And in the agent, uh, we also have logs. So when I click on logs, you can see, uh, well, you can see logs for this co configuration node and what were their input and output. So it starts with the window buffer memory where uh, we in inserted a new message, hello, how are you? So that was the initial message. And we see there's no output, so there's no messages uh, in that memory. And that was passed to the chat, uh, OpenAI, so the, to the language model. Uh, here we can see again the, the input. Here is the system prompt that it gives uh, to, to explain the agent uh, what it is and what it can do. Here at the bottom you see the user's input. Hello, how are you? And this is a simplified view. So we are doing some parsing on that output to show you this view. Uh, but you can also see it as a raw JSON of what exactly is happening. Uh, so this would be the, the object that we, uh, that we get. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's another way yeah. you can view the log as well. Uh, so theoretically, if you wanted to test whether your setup is correct, you could temporarily add a manual chat uh, directly in the canvas. 100%, let's, let's do that quickly. Uh, but for that, we'll have to disconnect uh, the Slack node or just disable it for now because yep. it won't know what, where to set Slack messages to. Uh, let's add the chat manual. Yeah, trigger is what it's called. I connect it to my agent. The only thing is that I will have to I will have to change the text. So probably just do that, copy it from here, and remove it. So I'll just change the expression to to use the JSON dot input for the text because that's what the chat is going to uh, send. Mm -hmm. uh, now that I have a chat connected, oh, I also need to change the window memory uh, session key because we no longer have this data as we're going to be doing uh, the debugging. So let's just split. It's all fine. I'll, I'll just copy it. will be super quick. Uh, and now we can open the chat. Uh, so we say, hello. Uh, hello. How are you? And it's it executed the workflow. Oops, here it's waiting for the webhook. So we oh, we have to disable yeah. the webhook. Uh, and yeah, here's the response again. And you can see the, the same log, but just for this specific response. Uh, you see that the user input here is just a single message again, because I changed the session key, so it doesn't have access anymore to that same memory. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is how a quick way how you can debug your workflows. One thing we haven't mentioned is the ability, the ability or where you can go to look to, to see how many tokens you've been using. Because oh, obviously, one of the mm. things that I've learned very quickly uh, is if you are using the API from, um, uh, uh, for example, GPT, you are, you're going to be using quite a few tokens quite quickly. <laughs> so it's important to be yeah, able yeah, to yeah. see where that is. That's, that's a good point. So uh, let's quickly show that if I add uh... Basically, I'm showing how are you model uh, open AI and I execute this. How can I access you? So if we go to the logs, uh, you see in this uh, language model step, open AI chat model, it shows you the amount of token and consumed and you can hover over this icon and it shows you uh, the exact amount of prompt tokens and completion tokens uh, because those uh, we have uh, sometimes different prices. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, yeah, so at least there's somewhere you can actually see how, how many you're using 
So you can refine your workflow depending on on your usage wanted or you, your usage limits. What what to do if you want to have your uh, agent uh, exposed, like on the website, for example? How to so uh, we have this LAM chat package that looks like this. It's an NPM package that you can either include in your uh, web application, but more importantly, you can also use an embed version of it. Uh, so we're just going to copy that. And uh, it contains this example workflow, how to set this up. I'm just going to open it and copy. I'm pasting that workflow. Uh, and OK, so that would be that workflow. Let me show you a version that is annotated. So here we have an incoming chat. So this is a webhook that listens on this chat agent URL. Uh, it transforms the, the body, so to, con uh, to convert it uh, from string to, to JSON, and it uses uh, switch to uh, to one of the actions, either send message or load previous questions. And uh, so this would take care of the backend of the agent, sort of. So you can see that here is the agent that we have connected. It's using the session ID from the uh, request body as mm -hmm. the memory key. So it would be able to remember uh, based on the session and yeah. it has access to Wikipedia and response to that with the web webhook. And now we also can use the embed version of that NAN chat module here. Uh, so I've just pasted it here, uh, basically. And uh, uh, you can see that it's create chats. Webhook URL is just going to be origin slash webhook chat agent. Uh, so this would be the the webhook from here, but the production one chat agent. And so we have two webhooks. One of them is to uh, handle the uh, the chat uh, connection, and the other one is to serve the uh, the the page that contains the snippet to render that mm. chat. So if I now save this and I set it to active, uh, and I go to production chat quick. This is my custom and then chat. So this could be whatever you can include it on whatever page you want. Uh, but here, more importantly, we have this chat window. Hi, my name is Nate, and how can I assist you today? And what is in my memory? Nice to meet you all. Like, what is my name? And it sh should remember my name. I know. Please. <laughs> Dare you yes. pray? <laughs> Of course, it was going to remember your name. You said it yeah, correctly. I just, I it. <laughs> so I, uh, we have that set up. Oh, let's just change the name here. What we'll is summarize select thread? And uh, yeah, we can go ahead to start actually building this workflow. So open a new page, add workflow. And uh, what it's going to do first, it's going to accept. So it's going to be called when executed or when called by another workflow. And we're going to expect these uh, parameters that we set here. So we're going to expect them to be to be set, uh, mainly channel and uh, timestamp. Mm -hmm. So let's just uh, mock them for now. Uh, let's do channel. So this is channel and this is the timestamp. Yeah. So essentially, what you're setting up is whenever an action is performed in the other workflow, it will trigger the actions that we're now instructing it to do in this workflow. Oh, uh, so whenever that tool is called, mm -hmm. uh, this workflow will be called with the uh, yeah with the inputs for that tool. Mm -hmm. So we're just mocking for now. We got channel and uh, the thread. Uh, so let's what so what we have to do uh, is get all the messages from this thread. Uh, get all the conversation to summarize. We have to check that the uh, we have to filter out the messages so we don't include the bot messages in case there's already summary, and then we have to pass that to the to the chain uh, to summarize it. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's let's do that. And for that, we're actually going to need one more thing, and that is the the bot user ID to know what to filter for. So we're going to bot user. Copy this expression. Here and what we're looking for is authorization dot first zero. Let me copy it from here actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, now we can start building this. So, as I said, well, the first step is that we need to get uh, this conversation. So, we use our Slack node uh, and we're interested in channel. 
so we're interested in getting a thread of all of messages posted to a channel uh, because that's where it's going to the yeah there's more messages we select our credential uh we get channel replies that's what we want so now we have to select the channel i click here by id mm -hmm. uh, because that's uh, that's what i know and i drag it here and that's populated now it's asking me for message timestamp this ts which is what identifies the thread uh I'll put it here and return all limit 50 we'll just leave it for 50 mm -hmm. with and we'll try executing it and we got that message uh which is great because that that works uh, but there's nothing to summarize here so we uh we need to use different uh we need to use different chat or a different message. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do that quickly. So we're just interested in listening for test event in the webhook. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to call now, it. Now you have to think from... of a uh, more complicated. Have you prepped something? Oh, already? no, no. Yeah, I'll oh. have this conversation about bread versus uh, croissant. So. <sighs> And I, I, by the way, that this is one of the beauty of using these agents, I, I think, because you can just say something like some distract, please, and it will know what to do. Like you don't have to program for a specific string to be included in your message. Mm -hmm. Let that to uh, the agents to figure it out. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, we got this response here. I'm just going to pin it so that it's uh, so I don't have to execute this test or uh, again from Slack, but I can just always have access to that data. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to copy the channel uh, here, and we're going to copy thread TS, which is this one. I'm going to set it here in our mock. <laughs> <Not kidding. laughs> uh, so yeah, those are the messages. Uh, right now we're in schema view, so this is an example of one of the, uh, those messages look like. So what we get is uh, text, uh, we get users, thread, and we also get blocks. Those we won't be using. So we'll just stick to uh, text user. Uh, I think that's that's it. That's all what we need. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also switch to table view if you want to like go over these uh, these messages or go over your data. So what I've just done here is I set it to send message to channel by ID, dragged in my ID uh, channel uh, ID. The message text is still the same, and I've added an option to reply to a message, so it imply, uh, replies in that thread. I dragged it, the thread timestamp, and uh, I didn't check in the reply to thread. Mm -hmm. So now we can execute it. Let me open this. Execute it. You see it went through, mm -hmm. and uh, the message is now sent. Uh, we didn't have to start the, the webhook again because now it already remembers the data from the previous execution. So now mm -hmm. when I'm in the node and I click on the execute node, it's just going to execute that single node. Yep. So uh, yeah, we have a response here. That's cool. So now if I execute this summarization uh, Slack node again, we have eight items because some of the uh, some of them are the new ones and some of them are the bot messages. Mm -hmm. Like for example, this one. So, and we see, this is the, we see an, oops, sorry, we see an ID here of the user who sent the message and we see that it matches with our bot user. So we have to filter it out. So uh, it doesn't summarize its own messages. We can do that very quickly by using filter node. Uh, we add a condition here. That condition is going to be string, I believe, because yeah, that mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. user ID is a string. And we'll set, or we say, user of the message uh, doesn't equal, no, equal value. Uh, so that bot user that's coming from the, as an input here. Mm -hmm. And we run it. Uh, we see that it discarded one uh, one item, this one, which is the, the bot message. So, and it kept these other se seven messages. All right, so that gives us the messages that we're interested in. Uh, now we just, uh, we just need to join all these messages into one object because right now there's seven uh, there's seven items. Mm -hmm. So if I would add a chain uh, to summarize it, uh, it would be run for each of these items. So we want to run just once. So we add it as a, uh, we merge it using the item lists and uh, connect. Now we can add our chain. So you're getting spacing and LM chain. 
and I'm going to insert my prompt here. Uh, so you are a summarization engine based on the messages below, provide a short title, description, and concise summary. If context requires it, mention sender's ID, they will be later replaced with actual names, provide your summary below. Um, so here we are iterating over the messages. Uh, you see it's red, so we have to just fix that because now the, the data is in JSON data and now we can map over it. So we're mapping over these messages and only including like the relevant information for the LM. Uh, it doesn't need to know about all the IDs of channel mm -hmm. and so on. It's only interested about the sender and yeah. the message and the sender and the message. And this is what is going to summarize. You didn't connect the model. I was going to say, so, <laughs> you, it hasn't got a brain yet. <laughs> you need to give it its brain. No, it does. Let's do that also. And uh, yeah, now we can run the chain, see what we get. Okay, it responded with the, well, the summary. We can see how, how it happened. Well, here it's pretty pretty simple because it's just a chain with an input uh, and it sends it to LM, but uh, this is the, the output. And you see that we asked it to uh, provide it in, uh, provide three properties, title, description, and uh, summary. Uh, but, and it provided it, but it's like in a free form text. So mm -hmm. uh, now we would have to parse it. But what we can do is connect an output parser here uh, that would tell the LM what format we expect the input and what format or what structure it should output in. Mm -hmm. uh, so structured output part. Uh, here we need to provide this JSON schema of the, of the output that we want. So let's say that we want title, which is a string. And we have we want a summary, which is also a string, so pretty straightforward. And we want it wrapped in an object. Mm -hmm. Now disconnected. Let's execute it again. See how it change. Yeah. And now you see that we got a JSON response with title and summary. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can already use it further in our in our uh, app, and it's it's parsed uh, as we want. If you want to be uh, like have even better control or better performance of this uh, output parsing, what you can do is you can connect auto fixing output parser. And this is a node that again, accepts the output parser, but it also has a model uh, connection uh, to which you can connect a model. Uh, and now it would auto correct itself. So if the if the message from the LM wouldn't adhere to this uh, to the JSON schema that we are asking for it to output the data in, it would tell the LM, and it would be using this model, it would tell it to try to self-correct and providing an example of a good schema and ask it, because it would know where exactly it made um, the mistake, so mm -hmm. it would uh, try to correct it. The last thing we need to do here, and we have it done, is outputting this data. So what the what the tool here expect here this summarized like thread it expects a single response object or whatever you specify your uh, response object ha as here you see response mm. so we have to make sure that our workflow adheres to that so we have the following workflow and uh, it does two things so first it's inserting data into the vector store. So when I click execute, it's going to get or all files in uh, in docs uh, in a Google Docs folder. The folder name is frontend Oleg, and I've put some uh, some PDFs from our knowledge base in there, uh, so I could ask questions uh, on top of it. So I got the file IDs and I got the names. Next, I need to download these files to get it as in binary representation into the N8N. Uh, so we run this for each of those items. I get an output here in a moment. Okay, four items. Uh, so I got these files. What's cool is that you can view these files. Uh, you see that yeah, they're legit. Uh, and now that I have them downloaded, I want to insert them into my uh, Pinecone uh, index. So I have Pinecone index set up uh, called vector data. I'm going to use namespace from then docs one two three four one two five. I'm always going to clear the namespace before inserting new data uh, to make sure it's on there multiple times. I'm I've connected the binary input loader, which takes care of parsing this data. So I tell it where the binary data resides, uh, how it can access it, and uh, I can tell it to split the pages of the PDFs. Um, maybe let's turn this off. Move here. 
all my data is PDF, so I don't have to decide if I want to use different loaders. Uh, I also have a token splitter, which is going to split these files into chunks. Let's give it a bit larger so there's not as many of them. Uh, 3,000 chunk overlap zero. And I have an embedding, so that's what these chunks are going to be. We're going to use the open eye embeddings to convert these chunks into mathematical representation of the data Then that's going to be put into the vector store that we're going to later search for if I execute it. See that this data is getting chunked. It's getting embedded and it's finally been set to uh, the vector store. And here's the page contact. If you would be interested what's getting into there, you always have these logs so you can inspect what exactly got chunked and even the embeddings if, if you're into that. <laughs> so now we have it in the vector store. Uh, uh, so this is a tool, so it has execute workflow trigger. Uh, we're not going to use it for now, so let's disconnect it. Uh, now we want to ask questions uh, on, on top of that data, and that could be done using retrieval QA chain. Um, all these chains you can find here, advanced UI chains. Uh, there's some other notes for the, the one for the Vector store is this insert, but we already have it here. So hmm. what's happening here is we've connected the Vector store retriever. Uh, we tell it to retrieve four matching documents based on that embedding, uh, embedding of the prompt, of the query. Uh, how we, you know, So I'm going to ask, how can I test workflow demo mode? Uh, because it contains some some of our questing guidelines, uh, some of our testing guidelines, um, uh, the data that we just uploaded. Mm -hmm. I have a chat model uh, connected, and I have the Pinecon load node, uh, which is using that index. And now it should be ready to answer that question. So if I go execute, you see again that it's doing all this. It retrieved the data, uh, passed it to the LM, and here's an uh, response. And that makes perfect sense. And we also wrap it again and we're throwing it as a response mm -hmm. to make sure it's available to use as a tool. I also would create a new tool, so the workflow tool, but this one is going to be named Answer Knowledge Base Question. Call this tool to get an answer based on company knowledge base. The input should be concise question. Uh, and the workflow ID loops. And now, hopefully, if we save this and we click on execute, we should be able to ask a guilt foil. How do that? That's the third name right there. So it was doing something. It's having see. a think. Nice. Nice. So it did exactly well, what you said. Pretty much, yeah, and that's that. That's it for the for the Slack uh, bot. Pretty much. Thanks for watching the highlight video from our workshop. If you'd like to learn more about N8N's new AI Langchain features, visit n8n.io/langchain. Don't forget to take a look at our AI Langchain contest. You can find more details in the link in the description below. It's running until November first. Good luck, everyone.